is so excited to see you in the day of the Lord physically, and he's so also so excited to be in the building again. Uh, it's a great blessing to be in the in the day of the Lord, uh, happy together, rejoice because. Uh, we believe and we understand that we are glorifying the only one and true God. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, this morning. Uh, and we're going to be reading in Acts. We're going to be beginning reading in Acts chapter 17, verse 6. That's the, we're going to find the DNA or the topic or, or, or our lesson in this morning. And thank you so much uh, to the brother Ryan that was reading this scripture this morning for us. So Acts chapter 17, uh, verse 6. The Bible says that the Apostle Paul, in the context the Apostle Paul, he was three days, three Saturdays. Saturday. After Saturday, during three Saturdays, he was teaching in the synagogue to the peoples, to the religious peoples in the city of Thessalonica, one city of the of the of Greece, one city of the Roman Empire at that time. And he was not only teaching the word of God, he was persuading the people. He was demonstrating that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And we we'll read in the verse 6, Acts chapter 17, verse 6. Let's read it, please. The verse, the verse 6 again. Acts chapter 17, verse 6. In the New King James Version, said that they turned the world upside down. In my version, it says a little bit different, but are the same words. Technically, are the same words. Said the verse 6, when they did not find them, when the people, the wicked people, after, after uh, the Apostle Paul and Silas were teaching in the synagogue and persuading the people that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the wicked people were looking for the Apostle Paul and Silas to catch them and, and to take them to prison. But they escaped. But they catch, in the verse 6, we read it, when they did not find them, in the verse 6, they began dragging Jason and some brethren before the city authorities or, rule, or, or before the rulers of the city, shouting, these men who have upset the war have come here also. In the New King James Version says, these, these men, they turn the war upside down down. That was the thoughts of the evil people. But that was, brothers and sisters, what exactly the gospel, the gospel do in the hearts of the people. That's what exactly the gospel produced in the heart of the people. And the history tells to us that the Babylonian kingdom, the Egyptian kingdom, uh, the Assyrian kingdom, the, the Persian kingdom, the Greek kingdom, and the Roman Empire, they conquer another kingdoms, and they conquer another countries. But they conquer all these kingdoms and all these countries with the power, using the power, of their armies. 
by Jesus the Christ, the King of Kings, the Bible said that he conquered the war and he turned the war upside down with the power of his war, with the power of the gospel. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, the Bible said that the gospel is the power of God for salvation. In that verse, the Lord God is only required one requirement to everyone who believes. We need to believe. We need to believe in God. We need to believe that the gospel is the power of God. And the Apostle Paul continues saying in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. And the Apostle Paul adds, to the Jews first, and also to the Gentiles, or to the Greek. So Jesus, this Christian, the Apostle Paul, and Silas, with the power of the gospel, they were turning down the war. That's, that's so exciting. We can see the power of the gospel of God. We can see the power of the or, or, the, or the Christian or the early church. We can see that in the news, in the new, new next line, sorry, in the next line, we can see, we can see how the early church turned the war upside down. And what was the way that the early uh, church used to turn the work upside down, it was simple. It was very simple, very easy. Just teaching the word of God. It's simple. That's all that the first century church of Christ or the first, first century church of the Lord was doing. Something simple. Just teaching the word of God. That is enough. That is more than enough. Why? We are saying that that is more than enough? Because the word of God is the power of God for salvation. The Bible also said that for the unbelievers, for the wicked people, the message of the war of the cross is foolishness. But the Bible also said that for us, for the believers, for the people that got a pure heart, a sincere heart, an open heart, the message of the cross is wisdom, is salvation. The Lord God is well pleased to save us or to save all the believers through the gospel. So that was exactly that the first century church was doing, just teaching the word of God. They took the Great Commission seriously. It's the same thing that we need to do. We are the church of the living God. We have to take this message, this message and this example seriously. Matthew chapter 28, in the next line, verse 18 through verse 20. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I command you. And I, law, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The first century church, they did exactly this. Simple message. We don't have to be inventing another way of salvation. 
We don't have to be inventing another method. That's sinful. Yeah, people is bringing more, more people, religious people is bringing more, but are bringing more people to the wrong place. Going to the wrong place. But if we follow this teaching of the first century church, we are gonna we are gonna be imitators of God. It's simple. In the next the next line, the early church. What happened with the early church? In the next line, we're gonna see it. What was the early church doing to be so successful in the obedience or the teaching of the gospel? So successful in the salvation. They're prepared. We need to, to be prepared. That's the reason that the elders decide, the deacon also decide to have meetings Wednesday, Sunday morning, Sunday evening, women classes, men classes, young people classes, because we need to be prepared. If we are not prepared, how is it going to be possible to teach this message of the cross to other people that they don't know God? How is it going to be possible? It's not possible. We need to be prepared as a church, but also like individuals. Like individuals. The elders, the deacons, uh, Brother uh, Charles, uh, Brother Derek, uh, Brother Kennedy, uh, Tal, uh, different men, Brother Rex, are reminding us that we need to be faithful, that we need to be attending the meetings, that we need to be studying the Bible, but also the Lord God is telling us that we need to be prepared to present defense. That's mean that we need to study the Bible. At home, we need to be reading hours. Hours. We need to be spending time in the, in the, the preparation of our study. We need to be prepared, brothers and sisters. And that was what happened with the early church. The Bible said that they're prepared. Acts chapter 2, verse 42, verse 46, and verse 47. Verse 42 says, they were continually, not once in a while. You know what? There are some congregations in Mexico, for example. They are congregating almost every day. Every day. Uh, we understand sometimes, probably we have more time than others. For example, right here, we are some members that we are working very hard in their own jobs. But even, even in that way, we have to set it up sometime to be studying the Bible. When we, when we don't do that, we don't have excuse, brothers and sisters, before, before the Lord. Because if we have time or to do another thing, going on vacations, be working, uh, watching TV, right? Watching TV, watching, oh, oh, this is a good movie. I'm going to watch it. I don't want to miss it. So how to explain to the Lord that we don't have time to be reading the Bible at least for about 20 minutes? No excuse. I have hair. I know. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not criticizing right now because myself too. I made many mistakes. Sometimes I don't spend the enough time to preparing me myself and, and I check it out. Hey, what happened? I need to, to prepare better for myself and to be helping to my brothers and sisters. This is the command that the Lord is giving me to me. But the early church is, brothers and sisters, and sisters, this is a beautiful example. They were continually 
devoting themselves to the apostles teaching to the apostle teaching and to fellowship to the breaking of bread fortunately we are following this we are following the apostle teaching right here we find the apostle teaching right here in the Bible. It's easy. We are imitating the early church. The breaking of bread. Yeah. We, we do padlock, right? We do padlock. We are happy together. Prayer. We, we practice the communion. We follow the commandment. We partake some minutes ago the communion, the offering. We are following the apostles' teaching. We are not going to go going in the wrong direction if we are following this teaching. It's impossible. And the verse 46 also said, day by day, we congregate only Wednesday and Sunday. What about the early church? Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple. One mind. Like Brother Kennedy was praying some minutes ago. He was praying for the to be united. That's me, one mind. They were agreed. The apostles are teaching this. We are agree with this one. It's true. They are representing Jesus Christ, our Savior, the King. They are talking in the name of the King Jesus. Let's have one mind in the temple and breaking bread. Right here, he's talking about the palace. Breaking bread from house to house. They were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord. You see, what is the conclusion right here? And the Lord was adding to their number Day by day, those who were being saved. If the war, if the inconvert, see, or example, or lie, they are going to come to Jesus. This is the way that the early church turned the world upside down. This is a beautiful example. The next line. Let's let's see what else. Number two. They remember preparation. Number two. Now we are ready. We are ready to evangelize others. If we are not ready, how is it going to be possible to evangelize to others? It's not possible. They were in the temple. Learning, hearing, paying attention to the teaching of the apostles, memorizing. Brothers and sisters, we need to memorize the word. We need to memorize it. We, in the same way that we memorize the movies that we see, and we start to tell the movie to our friend. Hey, have you seen that, that movie? Or we explain about the game, right? The football game, the soccer game, the basketball game. We memorize it. What about this? We need to memorize the word of God in order to teach the word of God to others. Now they were ready. The early church was ready, and they started to evangelize the word. The sound doctrine. They learned the sound doctrine. I'm not talking right here about the apostles. Yes. They turned the world upside down. That's why we, we start reading in Acts chapter 17, verse 6, the Apostle Paul. But not only the Apostle Paul, the wicked men, remember, they were accusing Jason. 
Is was Jason an apostle? No. Why I am saying this one right now? Because we are thinking sometimes, oh, just the elders. Just the elders. Just the deacons. Oh, just the men. No, brothers and sisters, everybody, everyone, everyone, we never, never say, I'm not able. We are able. Everyone is able. The things, the talents that you have, I don't have it. You got different talents. But everyone is a servant of the Lord. They evangelize the world. Acts chapter 8, verse 3 and verse 4. Let's read it. As for Saul, the apostle Saul, he wasn't an apostle yet. He was a persecutor of the church. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church. Havoc of the church. Entering into every house and hailing men and women, Christian men, Christian women, committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad, let's read this one, when Everywhere, escaping, escaping of the persecution, and that's it. Oh, we need to save our lives, right? Escaping from Saul, escaping from the rulers of Israel. No, they were not only escaping for their lives. They were, of course, they were escaping for their lives, but at the same time, they were, like we say, or like you say in English, they were killing two birds with one stone. Escaping and preaching, amen. And preaching the war, the message of the cross. Escaping everywhere. Nowhere. We don't know where to run, but we're going to run. But at the same time, we are going to be talking with the people. We find friends, we find people that they don't know Jesus yet. Let's talk about Jesus. Brothers and sisters, we don't need to be so stronger with the message. We only need to talk about Jesus. They were no excellent preachers like Paul. Oh, oh, oh sorry, Paul wasn't a, 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 a preacher or a Christian yet, but they they were no excellent preachers like Peter, right? But anyway, they were talking about Jesus. And that is more than excellent before the eyes of the Lord. So that was the first century was doing. Philippians chapter 4, verse 15 and verse 16. They continue turning the world upside down. Teaching the word of God, but also supporting. Supporting to others that this other preach the gospel or preach the word of God. That's another way that we can conquer the world. When the church, the local congregation, is supporting preachers in different areas, Different cities. The White Road, Church of Christ. We are spreading the word of God through those men that we are supporting. That's beautiful. That's excellent before the eyes of the Lord. That was exactly that the Philippians were doing with the Apostle Paul. Let's read it. You yourselves also know Philippians, that the first preaching of the gospel, the first preaching of the gospel, it's, I think it's too hard to forget this one. The first time that we were preaching the gospel. It's too hard. For me, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to forget it. My first preaching, I only 
fridge for about 10 minutes, I was shaking. So nervous. But the Lord knew. I didn't know, but the Lord knew. I'm going to prepare you. You're going to be an instrument. You're going to be my servant. I was so young, 17 years. And I start pre preaching, sorry, one month la later of my conversion. I wasn't prepared, to be honest with you. I felt the desire to help because the congregation he didn't have a preacher. Only a man that was doing the best that he could to do at that time. I was studying. And I knew how to read very well. I knew how to talk. But this was a different area. This wisdom is different than the wisdom of the war. It's very different. That's, where the, that's where, why the, the wicked people said that, that foolishness, because they don't understand that. They don't understand this. But for us, this is a beautiful message, a powerful message. But the Philippians, they support the Apostle Paul. That at the first preaching of the gospel, says the Apostle Paul, after I le left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving by Jew alone. For even in Thessalonica, you send a gift more than once for my needs. Not only once. The Apostle Paul says, more than once. Do you remember that we start reading Acts chapter 17, verse 6? Do you remember where the Apostle Paul and Silas were teaching? Do you remember? Thessalonica. They were over there. What is the Apostle Paul writing now to the Philippians? You sang me. Or even in Thessalonica. Not only in Thessalonica, but even in Thessalonica, you sang me a gift. The Apostle, you read the context. We don't have too much time right now, but you read the context. This gift that the Apostle Paul is talking is about financial support, money. You send me a gift more than once for my needs. So, the other way to spread out the gospel is supporting other Christians in other places. The Philippian church were putting upside down the war through the Apostle Paul. We are putting upside down the war when we are supporting another ministers or another preachers in different places. That's, that's uh, another way. Yeah. Let's see the next, the next line. This is a question for all of us. What did the first Christian have that we also need? This is a good question for us. Fire. They were on fire. I mean, enthusiasm. The word of God is like fire. So, it's easy again for us. We can't imitate them because they were on fire. They have fire. Doesn't mean that we also can be on fire because the word of God is fire. It's like fire. Or God is like the gasoline in the tank or the, or the car or the vehicle. We put the key in the engine and the engine turn it on and there is an explosion of the gas. There is fire and the car starts moving. It's the same thing that the word of God doing us. 
Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29. The Lord God is asking to the prophet, Is not my war like fire? What is the answer? Yes. The war of God is like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer which shatters a rock. The word of God is like fire. Paul, Silas, Jason, the brethren, they were on fire. They don't care. Luke chapter 24, verse 32. They said to one another, the disciples, the two disciples, they say to one another, were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road, while he was explaining the scriptures to us? Jesus, walking in the road with two disciples, and after the conversation, they said, what happened to us? Was the Lord? Why didn't why didn't uh, recognize Him? And they they are asking a question to themselves. Were not our hearts burning? Why burning? Because the war of God is like fire. Yes. And they said when He was when the Lord Jesus was explaining the scripture to us. Yes, the word of God is like fire. But we need to allow that that fire start burning in us. Like Romans 1.16 says, to everyone who believes. It's salvation. It's a fire. To everyone who believes. Only in that way. It is not enough. It is not enough to know and to keep the sound doctrine. That is not enough. We need to be burning. It is not enough to preach the word of God. We need to persuade the people. It is not enough to believe in the Bible. That's not enough. It's good, but no, it's, it's not enough. We need to be burning. We need to be on fire. More enthusiasm. Another, another point, very important right here that we see. They had completely surrendered to Christ. Acts chapter 4, verse 18 through 20. And when they had assumed them, they commanded them not to speak or to teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to give heed to you rather than to God, you be the judge. For we cannot stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. The rulers of Jerusalem command to the apostle Peter and to the apostle John, Stop. Don't continue talking about Jesus, the one who was crucified. Apostle John, Apostle Peter, they completely surrendered to Christ. They didn't care the consequences. We are, we can't stop. This is obvious. This is a true the most important truth for the world is this one. 
we're not, we're not going to stop. We're going to continue teaching this gospel. For someone leads me to go to prison. For someone this me a canonic class. For someone this one me martyr down. Sadly, many believers try to save their lives and as a result they lose them. Matthew chapter 16 verse 25. In conclusion, brothers and sisters, we're going to see the conclusion in the next line. Our need to be imitators of the first century church. Our need to teach the same plan of salvation. Simple plan of salvation. We need to hear the gospel. Faith coming by hearing. By hearing the word of God. No, any kind of hearing. Any kind of hearing is going to produce any kind of faith. But hearing the word of God is going to produce faith in God. That's the plan of salvation. Hearing, believe. We need to believe in Jesus as the son of God. We need also to repent. Chain or mind. Chain or way. We need to confess the Lord God or the Lord Jesus before God and before man. We need to be baptized for the forgiveness of our sins. And one more, we need to keep faithful to the point of death. If there, if there are anyone this morning that needs to be to the Jesus faith, this is the opportunity. You can uh, talk with the elders uh, and they are going to be happy to assist you. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. And this is the lesson for you this morning. Now we have uh, we give time to the brother uh, Pete for the invitation song.